this video will go through solving the equilibrium constant for three problems using a ice table. For the first problem, we have all the initial values filled in and we have one equilibrium value. This problem follows the format of knowing two of the three values in a column. Whenever you know two of the three, you can complete the whole ice table. First step, complete the column. Second step, fill in all of the C's. And then last step will be to fill in uh, all the rest of the remaining columns that I need to then solve for the equilibrium constant. So that C product column, we start with zero initially, we end up with four units. So the change is making uh, four units or four moles per liter. Once we know that change, we can move on to step two, and this is the stoichiometry part. The ratio that we see in our balanced chemical equation is the same ratio we're going to see in the C line. So I'm going to highlight that ratio. We have one A reacting with one B to produce two C's and one D. So our C line, our change has to follow the same amount of A, the same amount of B, the same amount of D, and C has to have double the change. So I'll fill in the D first. Now I like to do this by multiplying one change by the required species, the required coefficient divided by the given coefficient. So we're requiring D, and that has a coefficient of one, and we're starting with C, that's the given coefficient, and that's a two. So we're going to have one half the amount of D compared to C. So when I cut four times one divided by two is plus two. Okay. And when we look at that four C to two D, that follows the same ratio of having two C and one D. Okay. I need to figure out A and B. You know, they're going to have the same coefficient because they're both ones so with the same coefficient in the, in the change line. So I'll use that four. And I'll figure out B, the coefficient for B is one. So that was the required, we're requiring B. We're solving that from our C and that's a two. So that change is going to be two, okay? And it's not a coincidence that the D column change and the B column change are the same. Okay? Now our C and D products went up. So our B must go down and our A must go down. Okay? One side of the equation goes up, or one side of the equation goes down. Okay? I'm not going to go through the math of writing out the A change. Okay? B has a coefficient of one, A is a coefficient of one, so we have to have the same change. Okay? Now two to two to four to two is the same ratios as our equation one to one to two to one. Okay? It's just a, a doubling. Okay. So now I've finished step two. I can finish all my columns. A, we're going to end up with four moles per liter. B, we're going to end up with four moles per liter. C, we already uh, knew at the beginning was four. And D, we're going to make two moles per liter. Okay. So now I can solve for the equilibrium constant. I need an equilibrium law expression, and then I can plug in the values. So products come on the top on the numerator concentration of C in the gas phase, and I'm going to square that because of the coefficient, times concentration of D to the first power, because if there's a one coefficient, I'm not going to write to the power of one. That's our product done. Move on to a reactant. We have one A and one D. I'm just putting the state in for D. Okay. None of those are solids. None of those are solvents. So nothing is dropped. I can plug my numbers in. I'm not going to write in the mole per liter units, but they're the ones I need to use. Okay. I'm leaving them out for the sake of space. So we have C, 
that's 4, and I need to square it. Next, I move on to D, that's a 2. I move on to the numerators, A and B is 4 times 4. And when you solve this, you end up with a value of 2. Our second example is just going to have a little bit uh, more difficulty because we have more non-1 coefficients. So our required and our given are going to be slightly more complicated fractions. Order and format is going to be the same. We have one column that we know two of the values, so we're going to complete that column, do all our Cs, and then figure out the equilibrium value in moles per liter for all of our chemicals, which will let us then write an equilibrium law expression and solve for it. Looking at that uh, balanced chemical equation, we have 1C, 2F, 3K, and 2H chemical. So that ratio, 1 to 2 to 3 to 2, is what we're going to see in this change line. So starting with our first step, uh, complete the column, 0 plus 1.5 is going to end up with 1.5 moles per liter. So we know our product uh, went up, so all our products are going to go up and all our reactants must be going down. I'll fill in the next, the other product next. So I'm going to take a given change, which is one and a half, and multiply by the required coefficient, divide by the given. H has two of them, so we require, we're going to figure out H, divide by the given coefficient. K is our given change, and that's a three. So we're going to get two-thirds as much. So one and a half times two is three, divide by three is one. For our F chemical, uh, it has the same coefficient as H that we don't all, that we already figured out. So I'm not going to repeat calculations for anything that has the same coefficient. H is a two, F is a two they're going to have equal changes, so because H was 1.0, F is 1.0. It's just going down because it's one of our reactants. We do have C left to do. Now, if we look at C compared to F, uh, C is, has a coefficient that's half as much uh, compared to F, so we should be expecting half as much. I'm going to work my way all the way back from the K value, though. So we're starting with K, multiply by the required coefficient for C, which is a 1, divide by the given coefficient for K is a 3. So 1 and a half times 1 divided by 3 is 0.5. Okay. And this is where we're getting, if we compare to F to C, uh, C is half as much, okay? Because in the coefficients for the two, C is also half as big as F. So I'll complete those E values. C, four minus a half, we have three and a half. No, I never put signs in my equilibrium row because they're always positive. You always have to have a positive amount of chemical. We can't have negative chemical amounts. 5 minus 1 is 4, K is done, and H is 0 plus 1, 1 mole per liter. Our equilibrium law expression, products divided by reactants, I'm going to start with K, now there's 3 Ks, that's in the gas phase, so we're going to keep that. Our next reactant is H, that's also in the gas phase, squared because there's a 2 coefficient, move on to my reactants, C, there's only one of them, 
and f. There's two of them, so I'll square it. And no solids, no pure substances, solvents to drop. Now I'll plug in the numbers. No, we use round brackets when we put numbers in. If we do want to use any brackets, uh, k 1.5 cubed, h 1.0 squared, c three and a half, no exponent, and f. You know, all of those concentrations are in moles per liter, and they're all to two sig figs. So my final answer is 0 0.060 with no units. And my two significant figures are those two with the green arrows above them. Last, I'll work through uh, problem 1C. One thing we need to notice right away is that we have a solid. So we're going to have to remember that when we get to our equilibrium law expression. We have the same format as the previous two questions where we have a column with just one chemical missing or one box missing in a column. So we're going to complete the column. We'll do the change using our stoichiometry, fill in our E's, write an equilibrium law expression, and then paste in the values. So for chemical Q, we start with zero. We end up with two and a half. So we're going to make uh, 2.5. Next to it, the other product is P. Now, because P is a solid, and we're not going to include that in the equilibrium law expression, I don't even need to fill that out. I could, I would assume I would start at zero, but I'm going to leave it blank, okay? Because it's not going to be of any use. That's going to save me time. So I'll move on to N. I can figure out what the change is in chemical N by doing required over given using our balanced chemical equation. So we're requiring N. And there is a three stoichiometric coefficient. So that's a required. Our given is Q, and that has a five. So two and a half times three divided by five, we're going to end up with 1.5 units. Now we know Q, our product went up, so N, our reactant, must do the opposite, go down. Last, we need our change in M. M's coefficient is a two, and we're using the same five from our Q. It's going to end up with 1.0 as our change, and again, it's a reactant, so it's going down. So I know the equilibrium value of all the species that I need. We have 4.0 of M. We have four and a half moles per liter of N, P I don't care about, and Q two and a half. So our equilibrium law expression is only going to have the Q product. So we're going to need the concentration of Q to the power of five. Now, when you drop that P, it is equivalent to being multiplied by one. So it doesn't, be, it doesn't get dropped and be replaced with a zero. Uh, but we do not need to write the times one when we drop something. Moving on to our denominator from our reactants, concentration of M to the second power and concentration of N to the third power. Filling in our values. Okay. Again, I didn't put in my units, but highlighting I need to use moles per liter. 
you know, a shortcut for moles per liter, uh, not used in high school, but used in post-secondary, and you'll see it on worksheets, you'll see it next year, is a capital M is a shortcut for moles per liter. We have two significant figures in all of our equilibrium values, so our Kc is 0.067. where our significant digits are the six and the seven. The front zeros are not significant. You see this when you use scientific notation. You'd get 6.7 times 10 to the minus two if you express this in scientific notation, which more clearly shows those two measured digits.